Welcome, welcome today. So, right here I've got a toy uh, that I just finished making for Hasbro. Just really quick, fun little model for the Transformers line. Little thing. Okay, uh, this little girl is going to be no more than 50 centi uh, not 50 centimeters, 50 millimeters tall, which is a, it's roughly two inches tall. Okay, so you know when I'm trying to compare details or whatever, I'm trying to look at her like this big <laughs> on my screen. It might be bigger on your screen. I don't know, whatever. Um, but the thing I want to go through and do is export this so that they have a really nice, easy time to be able to print it and be able to create it, uh, whatever supplies, materials, and techniques they use there. So to be able to do that, we need an STL file. So the thing with ZBrush 4R8, uh, we used to have the, uh, underneath the Z plugins, we used to have the uh, 3D print export plugin. That tool has been upgraded. It has been changed to allow the user to have more control. Um, I'm not gonna lie, when I first saw this 3D print hub plugin, when I was first looking at it the first time, uh, I had a little bit of troubles thinking that uh, <laughs> this thing is going to be a little bit tricky to learn. Now, it is kind of tricky. Uh, you do have to kind of pay attention and actually think about some of the things that it says, but it does give you extra options underneath the size, okay? So far as what it's pertaining, uh, what it's controlling, what it's deriving the size from, if it's per sub tool or if it's for the whole tool. Uh, this particular thing is a union mesh object that I derived from my original, uh, my original sculpt, which had several different sub tools. So this right here technically is just one sub tool, one piece. You don't have to worry about anything, you know, really anything, <laughs> which is really nice. Um, so maybe I'll show you twice. I'll show you once with just this, and then I'll show you another time with all the different pieces. Yeah, uh, because it's it's kind of nice to know how to do it both ways. So to be able to do it with just the one piece, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to go ahead and hit update size ratio. Well, yeah, let's go ahead and hit update size ratios. It's going to pop up this window. Hopefully you can see it. Let me actually check. Yeah, it looks like you guys can see it. Okay, so um, what this is essentially going through and doing is it's asking you, okay, so total size of all your sub tools, that's the, that's the model as a whole, all the different sub tools. So if this were in different pieces, it's counting together the hair all the way down to the shoes. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and say, yeah, sure, this is fine, it's six inches tall. This is all gonna change. This is something that we're gonna make different. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna take this and I'm gonna come over to millimeters now my millimeter size height wise in fact just to just to verify because it's a good thing to make sure that you're not uh going in the wrong direction it, the, the full size that they wanted me to have this at is 50.8 millimeters tall okay so let's go in here to the to the y direction because that's the that's the height okay so 50.8 hit enter and there we go. So you see it's got, you know, almost 13 millimeters in the X direction and then, you know, a little over 12 in the Z. Okay, so really quick and really easy. Now here's the thing. Uh, this is what is what's controlling the size that you're looking at here. So it says for all tools. Okay, so this is going in, this is calculating everything from the hair down to the, down to the feet like we were saying. Now if you wanted to... <laughs> Use size of selected subtool really so it's it's popping up the little the little hint there saying for convenience sets the dimensions for the selected subtool the bounding box of the whole tool will be automatically updated so that the selected subtool has the desired size. So this is basing your whole model's size based off of how tall you want that actual piece to be. So if you if I had this split up and set and say I wanted the shorts to be four inches tall or you know maybe like you know something something like uh something like 100 millimeters okay more like 102 but you know 102 millimeters so if i wanted this to be 102 millimeters then i could say use size of selected sub tool uh then i could go in and i could say okay i want this to be um 
102 millimeters and it would reset the whole thing. So that's pretty nice. I'm just going to go ahead and leave that. You can also, once you, if you have this as like a setup in the way that you like it, so that way, uh, you know, next time if you wanted it to be a little more automated, you can just come down here and you can say store size settings and it'll keep those settings kind of, um, these, si these size settings, you know, set for you. Um, okay, so now we have these options down here for export. Okay, you have the options like you like you had in the uh, the old export plugin um, to be able to do all the subtools, the visible subtools were selected. Now here's a cool thing: you can have it um, export to separate files. This is a very very handy feature. Um, I have that checked on. So what it'll do is that if um, and actually what it'll do is so it'll export each subtool as its own separate STL file. Um, the really neat thing is that it'll give you the option to uh, either name the subtools or the STL files separately or to name them, um, you know, just one by one, or you can go through and you can have them export with the name of the subtool itself. It saves a bunch of time. So if you're, if you're good at staying organized and keeping your files named the way you should, hint, hint. Uh, it makes it really nice and easy to just go ahead and hit export separate files, say use subtool name for the export. And we'll probably we'll probably get to, to see that in just a minute. But uh, so I'm actually going to go ahead and change that name before I actually hit export. But again, you can store the export uh, settings. OK, I'm gonna close that back up. Let's come over here. Let's rename this Rebecca. OK. Okay, I think we're good. All right, so let's go ahead and say export to STL. Okay, so there it goes, it's pulling out the name of the uh, subtool that I'm using. Because I don't have multiple subtools, it's not really counting it like that. Uh, you can see over here that I have, uh, it's actually an OBJ file of the union mesh uh, result that I got when I ran the Boolean function. But yeah, so I'm gonna hit save and then you know, it says it's already saved, but I don't have the box popped up yet. So we just got to wait for that. And still waiting. You want to hear a joke? Just kidding. I don't really have a joke to be able to tell you right now. <laughs> My mind doesn't work like that. There we go. File is successfully exported. Okay, so now the nice thing is that we can go ahead and we can take that STL file and we can bring it over into Preform now. Um, you also have that option over here. You can just send to Preform. Once you have your size set just just fine, you can go ahead and you can send it to Preform. Um, we can go ahead and we can talk about that some other time. But yeah, it's it should be good, ready to go. So thanks for tuning in and... Hopefully, I'll see you again soon. Cheers.